Welcome to Opening Act for All's Ask an Artist series. My name is Brittany Adebumola. I am a proud Opening Act alum. Um, Opening Act is a high school theater program in New York City, and I'm also a recent graduate of Syracuse University, where I just got my BFA in acting, and I can currently be seen on Netflix's original series, Grand Army. Hello, my name is Lucia Morel. I am currently an Opening Act student. I go to Celia Cruz High School in the Walton campus where I play the flute. And I think this is such a great opportunity for not only me, but everyone watching because we're gonna get to ask some questions to actors and get to know a little more about the industry. Yes. So before we begin, if you're watching on Facebook, just take a quick moment and share this broadcast to your feed. And if you're watching on YouTube, go on and subscribe. Don't be shy to do it. <laughs> All righty. So today on Opening Act uh, for All's Ask an Artist series, we are thrilled to welcome Hampton Fluker to our broadcast. So you've seen him in Shades of Blue starring opposite the Jennifer Lopez, and on Broadway in the revival of All My Sons, earning him a Drama Desk nomination. So help us all welcome Hampton Fluker. Round of applause. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so before we begin, um, for those who are watching, drop your questions for Hampton in the comments and, you know, throughout the, I don't want to call it an interview, throughout the conversation, um, we'll address those questions as we go. All righty. So Hampton, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I'm good. Happy to have you here. So before we get into, you know, uh, how you got to where you are today and, you, you know, all the wisdom that you have to give in <laughs> 20 seconds, can you tell us one thing that's bringing you joy right now? Oh man! Or as of late, cooking. Ooh, I'm making shrimp macaroni and cheese tonight. You have no idea. So cooking. I didn't cook last year, but quarantine like made me getting like creative in a, in the kitchen. So my okay. That, but uh, also painting. You know, real artist stuff. You know, cooking. Mm -hmm. cooking. <laughs> Cooking's the first. That's the first that we've heard. That's the first mm -hmm. answer that we've heard for this. Question. I wish it was from cooler like dirt bikes, but like nah, just just cooking. Painting. Now, cooking's an art form too. You know, that's, it. that's it. What's the best dish that you've made? Probably for Thanksgiving. Um, I made a whole chicken with uh, with potato, like baked potatoes, asparagus, green beans, the whole nine. Um, got some good reviews on that. Um, and when you cook for other people, you know you you don't really eat the food; just look at everybody else eat. So uh, I got some good reviews on that. So I was happy with that. Whole chicken. That's just, um. that's it. It's really good. Um, I don't really cook that much, but I wish I could. Um, I guess we will, I'll start the questions. Um, so one of the first ones is when do you start acting? When did I start acting? Um, yeah. So when I was in middle school, I did my, my first play. I think I played John Henry, um, guy with the hammer. and. Um, and then after that, I kind of stopped acting for about two or three years. I got really into sports. And there was something that told me that I need to do both sports and theater. Um, and so I ended up, um, I was. So for a fellow, my first Shakespeare play. And that's kind of how I started. I realized that Shakespeare kind of came naturally to me, more so than football did, um, which was weird. Um, Cause I always put Shakespeare like, you know, over here. It's like, I was just, I was, I was very much a jock. So um, to get that itch that, hey, I might want to be on stage and wear costumes and like speak in old English. And it just, it just completely threw me for a loop. Um, but once I stepped on that stage and did that play, and again, I think this was like my junior year in high school, um, I never looked back. So you could say I kind of started late. So yeah, I did a play like a lot of people do in middle school and like, you know, just to pass the time. And it just, um, it hit me later on when I was about to go to college. And then I ended up going to college for it because I just found a new passion. I was gonna go to college for football. And I ended up going for, for acting. 
Wow, that's so amazing. I mean, I feel like I'm also like really into sports, but mm -hmm. ever since I kind of started high school and found the opening act program, it's just like acting has just been like what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. it's really good, yeah. Um, so another question or like just anything, um, when did you know that acting was something that you could actually do for a living? Um, well, I, I had very supportive parents. I'll say that. Um, I remember watching this movie called Glory, starring Denzel Washington, um, Morgan Freeman, and uh, it was uh, it was when I was watching Denzel Washington in one of these scenes. Um, I'm not going to describe the scene. It's actually kind of kind of violent, but um, I saw one tear come down his eye. He was being um, whipped by a slave master. And um, it was the first time I had actually cried, had a visceral response to someone performing something. And I remember um, running into um, my my parents' room being like, yo, I think I could do that. <laughs> like, all right, go to bed. <laughs> it, was, um, it, was just, it was just weird. I was like, it was like 10.30 at night. I had school the next day. And they're like, you're too little to be watching Glory anyway. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> um, I remember thinking, like, "Oh my God!" I think, I, I think, I think every artist has that too. I just, I just had the thought that, not in like an egotistical way at all, but like that I wanted to be able to move people like that, um, oh. even though I didn't have the context for how, like, you know, what it meant to be a slave, you know, in that movie Glory. But neither did Denzel Washington. But all of a sudden, he's making me cry. So how do you do that for people? What kind of artistry is that? That's pretty dope. Um, and then my parents were like, yo, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, so I was very lucky in that respect. My parents always thought that acting was a real job. Anything that you love that pays you money is a real job. Um, and so uh, that, that support, that foundation um, just uh, kind of catapulted me forward. And so I haven't looked back. I was very lucky on that in, in that respect. Yeah. So that's when I found out in my bedroom watching Denzel Washington cry on the TV. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And the fact that your parents supported you and you know, them. like they actually, yeah, and that they wanted you to do what you liked, it's just amazing. I'm sure they had their reservations, but they didn't tell me, tell me that to my face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they were very supportive. Yeah. Was sorry, but I was out for a little bit. My camera went out, but I'm back. Um, was there anything that I guess uh, when when you were studying in school mm -hmm. and you finally you know entered the industry when you, maybe you booked your first role and whatnot? Was there anything that you found surprising about the industry that maybe young performers who are just starting out uh, may not know now, but when they get into it, you might want to oh, have a whole list. Whole list, yes. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one that sticks out to me, I'll just tell you about this experience that I had. And I remember, um, I remember like calling my wife, who was my best friend at the time. Like, I remember calling her up and being like, yo, this is crazy. Um, uh, so in theater school, I went to BU and it's a great school. Um, uh, but you're usually acting across from a person, mm -hmm. right? So the first job, the big job that I booked was about a year out of school. I was on this uh, pilot called Warriors. Um, very excited. Um, tested. Got it. Like that whole process. Got past the table read. Didn't get fired. Um, and now I'm on set. Right? And this is like when I was 23. And um, the actress, brilliant actress, um, I won't name her because, you know, don't need to, but like brilliant actress, she was pregnant at the time. And so, no, not practice. She had just had a child. And so her child was on set. So she had to leave the set um, to take care of her child. And so it's the last setup. And I'm, it's my close up. It's my first real close up ever. And I've been dreaming about, so the Denzel Washington moment, right, Lucia? So, like, yo, it's my moment, right? To cry on screen. And mm -hmm. I do it with an X on the side of the camera because my scene partner can't be there with me. So I have to. I did it, which is great because you know that's why actors should be trained to get themselves to a point where they don't even they don't need much. But it was it was um, it was the first time I realized that um, 
doing it actually, not just doing it in school, not just doing it um, uh, just for your parents and like just being like, you know, or your friends just acting, right? No, actually doing it professionally means if this person can't be here, we're gonna put an X on the side of this, uh, this camera, time is money, let's go, act. That's the realest I can, so that, that was a, for me personally, that's what told me, and this goes into Lucia's question, that this is a job, that you're gonna have to go ahead and make this work. But it's not all like, you know, yeah, it's very, very fun and yada, 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 but you were hired because you can act to an X. And I think that, like, that's just the, one of those things that I think we should all keep in mind, that it's not always gonna be, um, you know, smooth and yada, yada, yada. On set, there's a lot of noise, a lot of distraction. Absolutely. from everybody but like yeah but that that would that would be like my that's the thing that surprised me about it right i think <laughs> the for a lot of us especially when we're younger the the whole dream of being a performer can seem it's very fantastical mm -hmm. it's very glitz and glam kind of lofty yeah but it's not until you really get into it when you're like nah that's actually hard work and it to be honest, that hard. Yeah, to be on a set for twelve hours a day, and you gotta you gotta cry to that camera for about five yeah, hours. Yeah, without a scene partner. Without a scene partner, and then after that, mm -hmm. you gotta go on to the next scene where maybe it's completely different, and mm -hmm. then maybe you're going back to crying at the end uh -huh. of the day. Yeah, man, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's great. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and. Then I'm sorry. Um, another question I had was, um, when you started acting, did you ever have anyone that was discouraging you that was saying like, oh, you can't do it? And if you did, how did you get past that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that, not to name any, yeah, I had teachers that discouraged me. I had, uh, well, I was lucky. I didn't have friends that discouraged me, but I had teachers that discouraged me in theater school who discouraged me. Um, but I think that's with everything, though. I think that you know, people bring up this culture of haters, right? Like, that's good for you. It, it galvanizes you. This is a good thing. Um, um, but it's also good to go ahead and let that go because this industry can be very negative. And so if you pile on the negative on top of what's already negative, you probably won't be very happy in what you do. So I try not to pay attention to it too much. But yeah, just with anything, whether you're acting, you're a businessman, you're a doctor, whatever, people will discourage you. Um, I'm not gonna name names, but yeah, it is. Um, there were moments where I did question myself, especially when I was uh, in college, just about to get out of college, go into this. Um, Self-preservation and self-love is a big thing. And so if you have a bad audition one day, and the casting director is not the nicest to you. Or if your teacher says, hey, that was horrible, you'll never be a good actor. You're gonna have to go home at night in your silent moments and be like, yo, I can still do this. That's not true. And believe that. That's the simplest answer I can give you. Um, but I tell you what, it's not easy to do. And I'm, I'm sure that um, a lot of artists, um, majority of artists have their own rituals in letting, letting negativity go. I hope that answered your question, yeah. I think yeah, so. Um, <laughs> okay. Considering that the, you know, it's not an easy industry to be in. It's not all glitz and glam. It is a lot of hard work and, a, and especially when you're first starting out, it's a lot of unpaid, a lot of free hard work. <laughs> a lot of free, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. how, or what are the most in quality, what are the most important qualities that one needs to uh, pursue a career in, in this industry? Perseverance. Um, I think you would agree, Brittany, like, you know, you get more no's than you get yeses. So I think that in a lot of ways, and that's another thing that I think that students should really grapple with before they even start this. And again, this is not negative. This is just the truth, this is reality. You, the majority of people will not make it, first of all. <laughs> And also the majority of people who do make it, there's a lot of luck and perseverance in that because a lot of no's came before that one yes that you see them on the show all of a sudden. Before that happens, 
there were probably hundreds of no's. And I'm not even kidding with the hundreds. I'm saying I'm serious. There were probably hundreds of no's. Um, so yeah. Um, hope that answers your question too. <laughs> yeah, but getting getting used to no. Um, and um hoping for a yes. Um, that's how I would answer that. And uh and knowing that when that yes comes, you gotta get busy, do your dance. You gotta deliver. You gotta deliver, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm. I, I think, would. I mean, from what I'm hearing from you too, I think, or at least another quality that I'm pulling from you is just, you just, you have to have a passion for it. Yeah, if you're not sure. willing, like perseverance is one thing, but like, if you don't have the passion to persevere, <laughs> yeah. then it's, it's so weird. Like, it's, it's so weird. I think that like, yeah, like not only perseverance, passion, but also just like this, I almost call it dumb. I feel like I'm walking around this, this world kind of dumb sometimes. Like it feels like insane, like doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, right? That's what it feels like. It feels insane. But yo, some of the best art comes from being insane, right? So let's keep on going. Let's do it. Insane in a good way, y'all. Don't go off the wayside. I'm, I'm saying like, <laughs> if it's useful, if it's useful, you know? But yeah, perseverance um, uh, and um, and just doing things that seem insane, just expecting a different result because sometimes you will get a yes. Mm -hmm. Keep on doing your best work. That's all I can really say. Keep on doing your best yeah. work. A word, people. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like that's really true too. Me personally, I haven't been like in the actual industry, like uh, auditioning and things like that. But I feel like that's definitely something I need to keep in mind when I do start auditioning and going and trying to book roles. So yeah, and also not only for me, but for other people, what advice do you give? um like to everyone watching right now who have big dreams but don't know where to start don't know where to start hmm that's a hard one lucy i'm not sure um you start with passion <laughs> first how do you start with anything right so you want to be an actress you want to be an actor cool look what city you live in Who's doing a theater production that you're interested in? Go. I remember, like, when I started, like, you know, I, was, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I'm trying to be on this TV. She's like, All right, we'll figure out where auditions are. She made me do the work. I, you know, I'll go ahead and get, give my mom a shout out. She made me do the work. She drove me there because I couldn't drive. <laughs> but, like, but, like, she made me find out where they were. And that's how I got my first role. Like, I remember um, Blindside happened in 2009, right? It's this movie with Sandra Bullock and it's about Michael Orr going, um, and she won an Oscar for it. I didn't know that when I auditioned for it. No idea. I saw it on some ads, probably on Facebook. It's like, Mom, after school, I'm trying to go, yada, 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 uh, And I did it and bombed. And then I left. And then the director called me back because he could tell I was nervous. And then I didn't bomb. Um, and then I was in the movie and all of a sudden I'm having lunch across from Sandra Bullock. And I'm not even graduating high school yet. I almost missed my graduation. I'm saying that if you take the leap seriously and do the hard work, this whole like, how do you start stuff? How do you start to learn how to swim, jump in the pool? Like just, if you don't know anything, then the only way you're gonna figure it out is actually doing it. And so um, I think a lot of, like a lot of the questions that young actors ask um, actors who they think are like really, really like privy to what's going on in the industry, they can answer themselves. And that's not a, a shot to you, Lucy, at all. I'm saying I, I reflect back to when I was your age. It's just so simple. Get out there, see what an where an audition is. And I guarantee universe, God, whatever you believe in will take care of it. I, I'm, I, 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 I don't know how else to explain that. It, just, just, it, it will take care of it. If you do the work, put a lot of good intention behind what you do, it will take care of it. Even if it's like audition for your public, like for your community theater somewhere in a small town, you never know who's going to be there. It's the truth. And a word. What, no. Another word. Dropping gems. <laughs> <Say> what? 
I said you just <laughs> dropping gems. Oh, okay. I hope so. I'm just I'm I telling the truth, man. That was, oh, yeah. that was like, my mama drove it out. This and I don't know. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I really didn't. Yeah. Then, uh, but universe is good. You, 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 uh, you mentioned community theater and just the word community um, mm -hmm. brought this question to mind. Do you have a community that supports you um, and that cares for you? And how did you find that community? And what does that community mean to you? Yeah, um, I didn't really have, again, I started pretty late. Um, and there's a part of me that's um, kind of been very envious of people who started early who did have that community. My community came um, when I went to BU. And then when I left college, um, my community really came people who were not even actors. That's also something I want to say, too, that for all the artists and the, um, the artists out there looking in, if you have friends who don't do what you do, Hold on to them, please. Because <laughs> my community actually became people who do not do what I do. Um, they actually, like, I get to talk to one of my best friends who works for American Express. And I learn from him because one day I might play a businessman, right? So it's good sometimes to, to pay attention to not only your theater community, but also what me and my wife sometimes joke about muggles. Like anyone who, like, <laughs> pays attention to Harry Potter, anyone who's not in the theater game, regular people, right? Like have that community too, make sure you have that because um, anything overdone is never a special thing, right? So if you only have theater artist friends and you think that's gonna like, you know, give you a community of like love and support, maybe it won't, maybe you need something else. Maybe you need somebody who works at McDonald's as a friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe you need somebody who like runs a Fortune 500 company. Maybe you need that. Someone who is completely outside of what you do. So not only can you make your, take yourself less seriously, because artists do that, but also you gain perspective that this is only a job. It's not your identity. Ooh. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Oh, we get lost in that. Because what we do is very, very important. Yes. Uh, you, you bring up a uh, theater community and like, you brought, I love community, but I also think community should be diverse with diverse thought. And that creates a whole person and a better artist, actually. Um, someone who's not so self-obsessed and someone who is not always reading Shakespeare. That's amen, all. amen, amen to that. I do have one more question before um, Lucia wraps us up with our final question. Um, sure. So it's the second to last question. Mm -hmm. um, you have done it all. You've, you've done film, you've done TV, you've done theater. Do you have a preference? That's the first part of the question. Do you have a preference over um, on-camera acting uh, versus stage acting? Mm -hmm. Oh, is that, okay. Um, that's yeah, that's the first part of the question. <laughs> okay, okay. What's this, uh, do you want me to answer that? Yes, and what <laughs> yeah. is the preference? Yeah. Theater. Theater, and why? I'm a sucker for punishment. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like, like I love, I love surprising myself. That's the narcissist. That's the narcissist side of me, right? I love being like, I can't do this today, but I have to. And there's no, there's no other take I can have. There's no cut. Do it again. I love it. I, I like when during the Broadway debut, I was with some really heavy hitters. That I, was, I was 28 at the time. It's 2019. Yeah. And I was like, when I first day I walked in the rehearsal room, I was like, I can't do this. And I had done theater in New York before, off Broadway stuff. I was like, yo, this is blowing my mind. How am I here? This is my goal to be here before 30. How do I do this? Done TV, done all that. Like work with J Lo, uh, uh, Ray Liotta, Dre De Mate. Oh, that'd be great. Awesome. The most nervous I ever was was walking into that Broadway studio. I wasn't even nervous on those other things. I was I was very happy to be there. I was gonna do my best work and I, I respected everyone I worked with and I give them all the love in the world for giving me that opportunity and like helping me fly. But when it came to my art art, man, can't nothing take away Broadway. Can't nothing, cause like that's what, if you are a little little kid who dreams, Big and Broadway's it. The lights, that, that, and also, um, 
the actual sweat, the actual tears, the actual, the just everything on stage in front of the masses. And to be able to accomplish that was something that I'll, I won't, I won't readily forget. I cannot wait till I can do Broadway again. Seriously, it's magical. And then, it's magical. It's cool. <laughs> so then, what? This is the second part of the question. Um, what do you? What is the biggest challenge for you with um, film acting and theater? Mm -hmm. And then, what is the the most, I guess, rewarding part of those those two uh, mediums of of acting? Right. I think that. Um, most challenging, um, again, is theater for me, at least. Um, mm -hmm. And the rewarding part of theater, I'm just trying to make sure I answer your question. The most rewarding part of theater is walking off feeling like I was an actual human being that day on stage. That was that, mm. that awesome rewarding. And that's to make the other answer simpler. I like theater more because right. I feel like I'm being a human being in front of people. That's so, so that's interesting. A, that's, a, that's a visceral thing. If I'm standing in front of the stage and I'm doing a scene with somebody, this fourth wall thing that people talk about, yeah, it's there, but it's not. You you know they're there. So the, the energy of it is, yo, are we all in a collective, are we all in a collective mindset that, hey, we'll tell a story, you're gonna come with us, right? Mm. That's, that's what I take away from it. And it's a great communal kind of effort and feeling. When it comes to TV and film, I like it because it's more intimate. Right. One else is. I don't ever feel like when I'm on set that someone is watching. Crew doesn't really care what your what your scene looks like. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's just really me and my scene partner. And that's there's there's value in that as well, where right. um, it's me and you, um, and let's we don't have to enunciate really. We ain't got to do nothing like that. Let's just talk real quick. Me and you. Let's go. And so there's 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 a gift in that. There's a gift in both. Either way, I get to act. So I'm not mad at it, um, but my preference would be theater. Yes, I hear that. Uh, thank you for answering that so thoroughly. Okay. Okay. I hope I did. Yeah. All yes, right. you, right. did, you oh, did. No, no, no. You definitely answered it. All right. Good. Um. Well, very sadly, I have the last question, and I wish we could go on for longer. But for the last question, is there any final words of wisdom? that you have? Final words of wisdom. Uh, no, I, I, I think that this might be wise, it might not. I, I would say, don't think so much, y'all. Don't. This whole, like, you know, all these questions are beautiful. Um, but as soon as you go out and audition and keep your, uh, and just put yourself out there, all these questions will be answered for you. It's very simple. Um, everything I just said is something that all of you will experience if you go ahead and go head first into it. And my like origin story, everything like that, like I'm not a star. I just, just happen to be on Broadway. I happen to be on a TV show. Um, these are cool accomplishments, but every single one of y'all is a star. Everyone's a star. I mean, the janitor at my high school, who I like really, really, I kind of like that guy. <laughs> like, that was the guy who also came to my plays a lot. I didn't bring that up. But I had a janitor at my high school who used to come to my plays. He's a star. He's a really, he's a really cool dude. Um, he's a nice man. This is a job. And if you want to do this job, um, don't do it because you want to be a star. That would be like my biggest advice. Um, because people look to stars for advice. Just do what you want to do. Go out there, audition real quick. Make it simple for yourself, please. Because if you don't make it simple for yourself, it's not going to be very fun. All right? That's what, I, that's what I really say. I'm, I'm saying all these different examples just to get that one point out that um, this industry has a lot, of, um, a lot of lights to it, a lot of extra stuff that goes on top of it. But I think that Brittany can attest to this as well, that when you're on set and you're in front of the camera and you're with your scene partner real quick, that does not matter. You're there to do a job. Everything else, the red carpet stuff, the cameras flashing, everything like that, people are still people when they go home. That's not it. And it's also very uncomfortable to, to act to an ex. It's like very strange job, you know? <laughs> it's just a job, so none of that matters. So I'm just bringing that down that um, when doing this, try to make it very, very fun for yourself. Don't make it too serious and don't try to be a star. 
pay attention to other people who do other things too. Like that janitor I mentioned, those are the people you should pay that will make you a better actor. Pay attention to simple things, simple people, simple conversation, but do not get like wrapped up in this, this star stuff. Just act because you want to act, please. It'll save you from a lot of heartache. <laughs> and I, I hope that's not up to the question. I hope that is a good way to end. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Thank you so, so much for speaking with all of us today. All the things that you said were amazing. Well, thank you for having me, y'all. I appreciate it. Yes, we really appreciate you being here and getting the chance to talk with you. Now, for everyone who is watching, do not miss our latest opening act for all video. Learn how to hip hop dance with Natasha Bell. Okay, and follow opening acts for all on Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube and join us next week for our next live event on Friday, December 18th with the one and only Dominique Fishback. Alrighty, thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week. Bye everybody. <laughs>